In this episode, we're taking our jump and speed boost that we set up in episode 39, and we're applying it to our AI characters. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and today we give our AI adversary character the final piece of functionality that we need to make it a fair fight between us and our AI, and that's the speed and jump boost ability that we set up all the way back in episode 39. And this will set us up for the final episode in this series, which is going to be next episode. All things in this world eventually end, and to me this seemed like the logical concluding point because by next episode we're going to have a working gameplay prototype. So if you've come this far, we're almost there. Let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna to start today in our adversary AI controller. So back in content, core folder into AI, and this guy right here, adversary AI controller. And what we need to do is we need to duplicate a function that we created in our AI attacking episodes. It's this get strongest ability in array function. I'm just gonna right click and then duplicate. And instead of get strongest ability, this is going to get the jump and speed boost ability. And the reason that we're duplicating it is it's almost identical to the get strongest ability. It's just got a few subtle differences. So the first one is we don't need our local strongest intensity. So we can get rid of this, we can get rid of this. And also the intensity variable here, we can get rid of that and we can get rid of this. And then in our local variables, we can get rid of local strongest intensity here, compile and save. And then instead of local strongest gameplay ability, we can rename this. And this is going to be our local jump and speed boost ability, local jump and speed boost. So we can connect up true to this and we got to move these over just a little bit. And actually this and we can delete out that too. connect this up as well. And I'm going to zoom out. We're going to move them over a little bit further still. I'm going to put in another reroute here and this reroute is going to be hooked up to the gameplay ability here. We need to create some space right after cast a BP third person character. Because what we're going to do is from the array element, from the gameplay ability, we need to get the ability type. Basically, we need to match to make sure this is the jump and speed boost ability. And in order to do that, we also need to get how gameplay ability is used, those two enums. And if this one, if the ability type equals enum, and if the equal enum equals air, and this, how the gameplay ability is used, if that is equal to not display only channel, and then we come over here and we do an and statement. So and, and connect both of these up. If those are both true, then branch and we can continue onward. So connect this up to here. And what I'm gonna do just to clean up the reroutes here a little bit, this, this, and this, we're gonna move these down, put in a reroute here, move this one down, put in a reroute here, move this right, there. So if you got all that, so everything else should be the same. So get jump and speed boost ability. I'm just going to pan over to the right. So compile and save. So now we got to go over to our adversary AI character because that's what's actually going to drive using this ability. So the BP adversary AI character. And if we go into the attack check function that we created back in our attacking episodes. So if I zoom out here and come over to the right at the end of the function. So we've got this AI strongest ability activate check and same thing down here. We basically have to duplicate this function because we're going to do something almost identical for checking to see can we activate our speed boost so right here ai strongest ability activate check we're going to duplicate and this is going to be ai jump and speed boost activate check and all we need to do is instead of get strongest ability in array we can just drag out our ai controller reference and say get jump and speed boost ability connect up the array here and connect up this to the two locations that the top one is connected to and then get rid of this one so compile and save this and then we can go into the attack check function because where we're going to put this, what we just created, the AI jump and speed boost activate check. Basically, if the AI character is not casting a spell, like if they're not casting an offensive ability, we want them to be moving around very quickly. So with this attack check function, we're already checking every 0.2 seconds, I believe. Yeah, it's everywhere from 0.1 to 0.5 seconds. It's checking to see, okay, should it be attacking? If it's not attacking, so if some of these branches are false, then we want to make it use our speed and jump boost. And the first false that we're going to do that for is if this branch evaluates to false, because this branch is checking to see, are we in aggression mode and our target has line of sight. So if that combination is false, like we're not in aggression mode or we don't have line of sight to the target, then we want to activate the speed boost, but only if we have the speed boost, right? So we got to check to see, do we actually have a speed boost? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this get and able to be activated or deactivated because we got to do the same check up here. So the false will move up here. And only if the current ability that's activated is able to be activated or deactivated, can it go forward. But if we don't have an activated gameplay ability, then we can go forward. So from here, we can say AI jump and speed boost activate check. 
I'm gonna put in a reroute here and I'm gonna connect up the true to here. So basically if we don't have an activated gameplay ability, then we could do this. Or if we have an activated gameplay ability and it's able to be activated or deactivated. And then the array that we're going to pass in is from our AI controller. And I'll just show you that really quickly. So on our AI controller, we have our ability arrays. Yeah, we can get our movement abilities from that and pass that in. So from our AI controller, we get our movement abilities, get movement abilities, and then connect this up here, compile and save this. But there's one other place I wanna connect this up to, and that is this branch right here. Because if this branch right here evaluates to false, that means the current target is not a character then we might as well move toward the current target and that's our acquisition in that case so false connect this up here and then i'm just going to comment this so uses speed and jump boost only if not in aggression mode or target is not a character compile and save again so let's minimize this and before testing let's just get our spawner that we set up last episode you could also search for spawner in the outliner here and I'm gonna change a few different things here. I'm gonna set the number of actors to spawn to be very high, so let's do 100. And the spawn radius, let's set that to 11,000. Basically set this to however large your island is. And this should be the center of the island, center of level. And then we're ready to test it out. So let's watch our AI adversary character. I'm gonna right click, play from here. And as soon as he actually gets an air ability, he hasn't gotten one yet, but as soon as he actually gets one, we should see him running all over the place. I'm just gonna get one so I can follow him. And there we go. And he's off and running. But the problem is he's getting hurt. And he's even getting hurt to the extent that he'll probably end up killing himself running around this way. Yeah, there we go. And the reason he's killing himself is because of collision damage that we set up back in episode 44. And it's not really collision damage, it's damage based on how the velocity changes from tick to tick. So you might have noticed that over the course of this series, if you get a lag spike, you'll suddenly take damage. And it's at the point, especially with this AI character, that I realized that, that was the wrong way to do collision damage. Collision damage should be based on collisions not the change of velocity tick to tick. At this point, it's crossed the threshold of my annoyance test into annoyance, and so we're just gonna disable that one feature. So to do that, it's very simple. Let's go into our content drawer, back over to core, into our animation blueprint third person character. And if we go over to the event graph, so if you zoom out a little bit, come up near the top, it's this string right here. So we have this assess vertical impact force and damage and also assess general impact force and damage. Now we're gonna keep the vertical impact force and damage. I found that that works just fine. It's just the horizontal, the collision, that's causing the issue and so very simple we're just going to hold alt and disconnect both of those move this one in and that's actually going to be a performance improvement because there's less that's being evaluated tick by tick compile and save this and let's go ahead and actually close out of all of our blueprints here and let's actually test fighting because, well, you'll see. Make sure your AI character has actually picked up a number of abilities like I have and then once they have, B. And what you should see is if we line of sight the target, so actually let me line of sight him so he can't attack me, and he should be using the, uh, the air ability boost to get within line of sight. Yep, there we go. And there he goes running. So we have a much more viable adversary AI. You know guys, we've been looking at this bleak island for the last 25 episodes or so, and let's just give it a little bit of flair. I don't think we can give it too much foliage because performance wise, that's gonna mess up the next episode, but let's just give it a little bit. So let's go over to foliage mode, and we're gonna select our existing rocks that we've got. These are from our cave episode, and I'm gonna give them a brush size of 2000. I'm also gonna increase my camera speed for this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint some of these rocks all around the beach. I'm gonna adjust the Z offset a little bit. So it's gonna be negative 100 to negative 20. And that way it's not fully embedded in the ground. And the density, we don't want it to be 10 because that was our cave ceiling. Let's set it to 0 0.2 and then paint these all around the beach. And it could be in the water too. And then for the interior of the island, I actually ran into some problems painting these same rocks because they're used for the ceiling of our cave and that's already in the interior of the island. So if we paint with these same rocks with these same foliage assets, it's gonna mess up that interior. So what I'm gonna do instead, we're gonna go back to something we did all the way back in episode nine of the series. So back to content, mega scans, 3D assets into the earth quadrant, main palette. And instead of using earth rock one cave ceiling, all of these, which are these, we can take earth rock one, earth rock 12. And it's 
it's up to you. You could do all 12 here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with the same one. So one, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, three, four, five, six, and seven, and move them in. And this way, if we select those, so I can highlight all the zeros and select them, and actually one by one, I'm just going to change the scale here to vary up a little bit more. And these are the ones that could be rotated in any direction, and it'll work just fine. All right, so we got them all. I'm going to embed them a little bit deeper into the ground. So negative 100 and negative 20. And make sure you got random yaw check there so it can be spun on any axis. But our density, so this is key, not 100, set it to 0 0.01. And then the align max angle here, I'm going to set this to 30. And then let's go ahead and paint. And if you want it to be a little bit more dense, obviously you can crank that up, but do it slowly just so you're not overwhelming the landscape with rocks. But this way we can modify this pretty easily without messing up our cave ceiling. And the last thing, so I'm going to go back into selection mode, the last thing to prepare for our final episode next episode. I'm just going to change the project settings to improve performance a little bit. And if you remember back in our cutscene episodes, we changed this anti-aliasing to temporal super resolution TSR here. I'm just going to go right back to temporal anti-aliasing and exit out of that. And save all. Save. All right, very last thing, setting us up for next episode. Let's drag in multiple AI characters into the world. So back to content, core, AI. And I recommend maybe four or five. I did like 16 and it started to slow down my machine. Four or five was just fine. So let's do four or five. And we also got to set up V for attacking to work with multiple characters. So let's do that real quick. So back to core and then third person character and event graph. We can get rid of this B, delete that. So the V here, instead of what this is doing, I'm gonna make some space, we're just gonna do, I know we're never supposed to do this, get all actors of class, but just this episode. And next episode, we'll be ready. And we need to change our actor class to BP adversary AI character. And then from out actors, we can do for each loop, and we can connect up this to here and this to our AI controller reference. And one more thing. So we got to connect it up to this over here. So array element all over here to this and then delete out this connect up loop body to here, compile and save close out of this. And let's do one last test with all of our characters. And once you give them a few seconds, then uh, V. And away they go. So we are all set for our next episode. And like I said, next episode is going to be the very last episode. And I hope you join me. It's going to be a fun one. So I hope to see you there.